Item number, SCP-028. Object class, safe. Special containment procedures. No special means are needed to contain at this time, as SCP-028 has not shown any change in size, position, or shape during the entire period of its containment, but access must be restricted. Currently, SCP-028 is contained on site, site as SCP-028 is not transportable by any known means. SCP-028 is sealed in a 6 meter by 6 meter by 3 meter, 20 meter by 20 meter by 10 meter foot, concrete room with a single door, with two armed personnel stationed outside. Only authorized personnel are to be allowed exposure to SCP-028, and extreme care must be taken at all times. While SCP-028 is itself harmless, the effect can be very damaging to the unprepared. See document EL-028-1125. Description: SCP-028 is located in an abandoned storage yard outside a copper mine in northern Michigan. SCP-028 has no detectable physical presence of any kind, but its effect occurs in a 2.1 meter, 7 foot cube around what is commonly held as the center of SCP-028. All forms of scanning and testing in the area of SCP-028 have shown no abnormal readings, adding or removing objects or attempting to remove dirt from under SCP-028 has no effect in altering the size or shape of SCP-028's area of effect, nor the onset or quality of the effect. Subjects entering SCP-028 are, within three to six seconds, struck by total and complete knowledge of a subject. This knowledge is thus far completely random in both size and usefulness, and sometimes goes unnoticed for extended periods of time. More profound knowledge generally has a stronger effect, with some cases expunged. See document EL-028-1125. This effect can be experienced multiple times by exiting and re-entering SCP-028, but can result in increasingly strong migraines and dizziness after two exposures. SCP-028 came to the Foundation's attention after research into news reports of a local miner who submitted a design for a cold fusion reactor to the U.S. Patent Office. Mr. reported that it just came to me, like a bolt out of the blue. News and subjects were suppressed and contained after discovery of SCP-028 and the reactor designs implemented in the containment of SCP-1995. Subsequent testing of SCP-028 has yielded mixed results. Document number EL-028-1114 Partial Information Retrieval Log for January 5th Note, all knowledge is perfect, total, and eidetic. Every phone book entry for New York City in 1998. How to redesign the internal combustion engine to run on human blood, using only pre-existing parts. Note, full redesign takes four hours and runs at higher efficiency than gasoline. Location of keys for a Buick LeSabre. The proper method of care for a mole rat colony. Origin and history of 12 SCP objects. Note, the main expunged. Family history of the Blackthorn family, located in London, England. Geological structure of the Earth beneath Greenland, including several unknown caves and expunged. Document number EL-028-1125 Log E-112 Subject D-1182 exposed to SCP-028. Subject began to cry and went into fetal position, showing signs of high distress. Unresponsive to questioning and outside stimulus for several days, lapsed into catatonia shortly after stating that this is not life. Subject passed into a coma and died shortly thereafter. COD was attributed to shock. E-127, Agent accidentally exposed to SCP-028. Agent showed signs of sudden surprise and bemusement. When questioned, Agent requested, a moment to gather my thoughts, please. After several seconds, Agent laughed, shook his head, and removed his service pistol from its holster. Agent then shot and wounded Dr. and killed Agent and before being restrained. Post-incident interrogation revealed Agent had extensive knowledge of classified Foundation activities and several SCP objects he had not been previously exposed to, including SCP-2669. Any Foundation personnel found to have entered SCP-028's area of effect are to be detained indefinitely. 
Document number EL-028-1128. Log. Experiment 189. Subject D-9843 was exposed to SCP-028. Examination of subject revealed abnormal respiratory actions. Questioning revealed subject had learned to recycle the carbon dioxide inside his body. Repeated attempts to teach the skill to other D-Class personnel failed. Subject terminated. Autopsy reveals no abnormal organ formations. Researcher's notes. Dr. Seriously, how the hell did he do that? Item number. SCP-031. Object class. Safe. Special Containment Procedures SCP-031 is to be contained in a standard containment chamber, located in Site-77's Safe SCP Wing. Personnel interacting with SCP-031 are not to view it directly, and communicate with test subjects through an intercom system installed in each chamber. The containment chamber is to be cleaned once per week by custodial staff, wearing opaque goggles to mitigate SCP-031's effects. Description: SCP-031 is an amorphous organism with a mass of 75 kilograms. SCP-031 is able to move at a pace of 3 kilometers an hour and leaves a trail of oil when it moves. It is only capable of rudimentary physical movement. Testing of recovered tissue samples has shown that SCP-031 is at least partially composed of human muscle and epidermal tissue. SCP-031 is capable of reproducing human speech in any pitch or tone, although it is not currently known how SCP-031's biology produces them. Subjects directly perceiving SCP-031 will see it as an individual the subjects knew and had a romantic attraction to at some point in their past. When made aware that it is being observed, SCP-031 will claim to be this person and that they have been left destitute by some event in their past. SCP-031 will use this to attempt to persuade the subject to allow it to stay with them for an extended period of time, until it is able to return to a stable situation. This effect applies to all persons who view SCP-031, and research has not determined an upper limit to the number of persons who can be affected by SCP-031 at the same time. After inspecting the residence, SCP-031 may attempt to start a romantic relationship with the subject, and if successful, it will begin living in their home. Several cases have been documented where SCP-031 began to actively affect more than one subject at a time, eventually having a nest containing between at least 18 different hotel rooms containing subjects with some form of relation to SCP-031. SCP-031 was recovered following contradictory police records taken after a riot and Multiple subjects reported wildly contradictory views about SCP-031's appearance, and initial civilian units were also affected. However, wide distribution of amnesiacs and inhaled tranquilizers pacified all affected subjects, and MTF Psi-7 was able to recover SCP-031 from the condemned hotel it had taken residence in. As of 11-16-1958, SCP-031 has been classified as safe. Addendum. Research has determined that aromantic subjects are not affected by SCP-031. However, all of these subjects will report SCP-031 as being a small, plump humanoid figure, with specific features being obscured by dark smoke emanating from around the entity in the shape of SCP-031's body. Further testing is required to explain this phenomenon. Further testing has shown that the perception of subjects affected by SCP-1937 is similarly affected. Item Number SCP-035 Object Class Keter Special Containment Procedures SCP-035 is to be kept within a hermetically sealed glass case, no fewer than 10 centimeters 4 inches thick. This case is to be contained within a steel, iron, and lead shielded room at all times. Doors are to be triple locked at all times, with the exception of allowing personnel in or out. No fewer than two armed guards are to be posted at any time. Guards must remain outside at all times, and are not allowed within the containment room under any circumstances. A trained psychologist is to remain on site at all times. Research personnel are not to touch SCP-035 at any time. SCP-035 must be moved to a new sealed case every two weeks. 
The previous case must be disposed of via SCP-101, as it shows no adverse reactions to SCP-035's corruption. Anyone who comes into contact with SCP-035 when it is in possession of a host is to be given an immediate psychological evaluation. Description SCP-035 appears to be a white porcelain comedy mask, although, at times, it will change to tragedy. In these events, all existing visual records, such as photographs, video footage, even illustrations of SCP-035 automatically change to reflect its new appearance. A highly corrosive and degenerative viscous liquid constantly seeps from the eye and mouth holes of SCP-035. Anything coming into contact with this substance slowly decays over a period of time, depending on the material, until it has decayed completely into a pool of the original contaminant. Glass seems to react the slowest to the effects of the item, hence the construction choice of its immediate container. Living organisms that come into contact with the substance react much the same way, with no chance of recovery. Origin of the liquid is unknown. Liquid is only visible from the front, and does not emerge or is even visible from the other side. Subjects within 1.5 to 2 meters, 5 or 6 feet, of SCP-035, or in visual contact with it, experience a strong urge to put it on. When SCP-035 is placed on the face of an individual, an alternate brainwave pattern from SCP-035 overlaps that of the original host, effectively snuffing it out and causing brain death to the subject. Subject then claims to be the consciousness contained within SCP-035. The bodies of possessed subjects decay at a highly accelerated rate, eventually becoming little more than mummified corpses. Nevertheless, SCP-035 has demonstrated the ability to remain in cognitive control of a body experiencing severe structural damage, even if the subject's body literally decays to the point where motion is not mechanically possible. No effect is found to be had when placed on the face of an animal. Conversations with SCP-035 have proven to be informative. Researchers have learned various details about other SCP objects and history in general, as SCP-035 claims to have been at many momentous events. SCP-035 displays a highly intelligent and charismatic personality, being both amiable and flattering to all those who speak with it. SCP-035 has scored in the 99th percentile on all intelligence and aptitude tests administered to it and appears to have a photographic memory. However, psychological analysis has discovered SCP-035 to possess a highly manipulative nature, capable of forcing sudden and profound changes to interviewer's psychological state. SCP-035 has proven to be highly sadistic, prompting some to commit suicide and transforming others into near-mindless servants with linguistic persuasion alone. SCP-035 has stated that it has intimate knowledge of the workings of the human mind, and implied that it could change anyone's views if given enough time. Additional Notes SCP-035 was found in a sealed crypt in an abandoned house in Venice in 18... Addendum 035-01 SCP-035 has been found to be able to possess anything that has a humanoid shape, including mannequins, corpses, and statues. SCP-035 has been able to motivate all into movement, removing the need to expose live subjects to SCP-035. Still, anything it possesses inevitably decays into motionlessness. Addendum 035-02 SCP-035 has facilitated an escape attempt, convincing several of the research staff to aid it in its bid for freedom. Insurrection failed. All staff that have been in contact with SCP-035 have been terminated, and mandatory psychiatric evaluations have been implemented for all personnel coming in contact with SCP-035. Addendum 035-03 it has been determined that SCP-035 is capable of telepathy, whether or not it possesses a host, even penetrating to the subconscious of others, and using the knowledge it finds to its advantage. Extreme caution is advised when choosing subjects to converse with SCP-035. Addendum 035-04 
SCP-035 has expressed an interest in other SCPs, most notably SCP-4715 and SCP-682. Dr. has expressed worry that should SCP-035 bond with either, their regenerative qualities would negate its corruption and give it a permanent host. Addendum 035-05 After several more escape attempts, and after reviewing SCP-035's incident record, High Command has ordered that it be permanently sealed within the facility and prohibited from being allowed any more hosts. Several personnel have protested against this, with some even erupting into violence. As a direct result, all personnel that have come into contact with SCP-035 have been terminated. Going forward, all personnel that deal with SCP-035 are to be rotated frequently, and contact is to be limited even to its dormant state to as little as possible. Addendum 035-06 Personnel within 10 meters of SCP-035 have recently reported feeling unease, stating that they can hear unintelligible whispering. Several others have suffered from severe migraines. Object has been monitored, but there is no change in its dormant behavior, and no sounds have been recorded. The motion to reinstate SCP-035's host privileges has been brought up once more, if only on a temporary basis, to discover these new changes in the object's behavior. Denied. Addendum 035-07 The walls of SCP-035's containment cell have suddenly begun secreting a black substance. Tests on the substance have revealed it to be human blood, although highly contaminated with several foreign and unknown agents. Substance is corrosive, having a pH balance of 4.5, and prolonged exposure to the walls has proven to be detrimental to their structural integrity. More notably, it seems to be forming patterns on the walls. Several segments seem to be paragraphs in various languages, including Italian, Latin, Greek, and Sanskrit. Translation is pending. Other segments appear to be diagrams depicting ritualistic sacrifice and mutilation, often for the arcane benefit of the person committing them. Several staff members have been shocked to note that all of the sacrifices bear an uncanny resemblance to various personnel and their loved ones, often in conflicting positions. Researchers while in the room examining these newly formed patterns have complained of hearing loud whispering and high-pitched, unnerving laughter at irregular intervals. Personnel in the section working daily near and around SCP-035's containment unit have suffered catastrophic morale damage, with an all-time high in suicide rates in staff in that area, whether or not they have ever had contact with SCP-035. The only change in SCP-035's dormant behavior is regarding its contained glass case. Degradation of the case has increased to a high degree, enough so that the glass will occasionally shatter causing a wide dispersal of SCP-035's contaminant. This occurs quite often at the most inopportune times, so far resulting in six casualties and three fatalities of both research and cleanup staff. Addendum 035-08 In light of the mass suicide and homicide of the members of the research team tasked with translating the passages garnered from SCP-035's containment cell, the morale damage in the area and general loss of staff dealing with SCP-035 to either death or insanity, it has been decided to coat the inner and outer walls of its containment cell with SCP-148, which has proved well in the containment of SCP-132, in order to hopefully block out the high levels of negativity being emitted by SCP-035. Addendum 035-09 The use of SCP-148 has worked well causing morale and suicide rates to return to near pre-SCP-035 rates. However, the material appears to facilitate the negativity within the cell, causing a veritable greenhouse effect inside. Personnel inside the cell have stated that they feel a heavy sense of dread, fear, anger, and general depression, as well as hearing constant, nearly inaudible whispering upon immediate entry. A prolonged stay causes severe migraines, suicidal tendencies, heavy hemorrhaging of blood vessels around the eyes and inside the mouth and nose, general hostility to others, and for the whispering to increase to almost deafening volumes, intersected by a constant mocking laughter. 
Exposure of more than three hours inevitably results in the subject falling into a deep psychosis and attempting to harm either themselves or others. Most spoke in Latin or Greek, despite the fact that several did not previously know how to speak said languages beforehand. The presence of blood in both word and diagram formations has increased disproportionately, the walls becoming cluttered and the formations beginning to overlap each other. The substance has proven to be both difficult to clean and even more corrosive than was originally recorded, with a pH of roughly 2.4. General estimation gives the current walls a life of two months before they will need replacement. It is becoming gradually more and more difficult to contain SCP-035 and the debate to reinstate its host privileges has once again come up. Denied. Addendum 035-10 The walls, ceiling, and floor of SCP-035's containment cell have now been completely saturated in blood. All personnel entering and guarding the area must wear full hazmat protection suits. Constant cleaning efforts are being instated. Addendum 035-11 the magnitude, intensity, and recurrence of the phenomena that occur within SCP-035's containment cell have increased to an alarming degree. The cell door has been known to become locked of its own accord while personnel are inside and unable to be opened for a period of time. Appendages form out of the larger puddles of blood and often attempt to grab or harm personnel near them. Blurry apparitions have started appearing to staff. Electronic devices no longer work inside the cell, and the light cannot be turned on, though there is no physical reason why it does not work, forcing those entering to use non-electric-based light sources. Cleaning measures are having no discernible effect on the cell, and the walls are degrading at a very high rate, forcing them to be replaced within a week at best, although the blood makes it nearly impossible to properly achieve this. SCP-035 may have to be moved to a new cell entirely, with the old one sealed off and disengaged from the rest of the facility. Item Number SCP-041 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-041 is to be hospitalized at Bioresearch Area 12. Though not Keter Class, should SCP-041's abilities ever propagate beyond a reasonably containable area, the risk of SCP-sensitive information being broadcast to the public remains too great a risk and warrants area-level isolation away from the general populace. SCP personnel wanting to keep their thoughts private are advised to remain outside of a 15-meter radius from SCP-041, beyond the designated red circle on the floor. It is beneficial to the mental health of SCP-041 to have a sitter in the room who watches television and concentrates on its programming. This allows SCP-041 to effectively watch television through the mind of someone else. The optimal sitter is a Class D personnel with below average intelligence whose mind does not wander or have more than one train of thought at a time. Though not mind control, SCP-041 has used its abilities to coerce sitters into watching programming that they don't themselves enjoy. SCP-041's tastes vary between gore and slasher films, having even expressed interest in snuff and children's programming. Description: SCP-041 is a male human suffering from irreversible damage to his central nervous system, which is believed to have been caused by an infection of a rare strain of bacterial meningitis. Although antibiotics were successful in clearing the infection, the membranes surrounding his brain and spinal cord had reacted to the infection by severing many neurons connecting the central nervous system to the rest of the body. SCP-041 must rely on a respirator to sustain his breathing, a biventricular pacemaker to keep his heart beating, and a nasogastric tube to provide nutrition. Visually, SCP-041 appears to be in a persistent vegetative state. However, observers in the presence of SCP-041 begin to realize that their thoughts, along with everyone else's in about a 10 meter radius from SCP-041, are broadcast in a semi-audible fashion. Aside from being the source, SCP-041 is also capable of broadcasting his own thoughts to those present. Anyone forming an idea using words will have those thoughts unwillingly transmitted to others in this range as mind-audible speech, which cannot be recorded by any known equipment. Mind-audible speech may be heard using whatever voice a subject chooses to think with. Most typically, this is the subject's normal voice. Visual thoughts and images are broadcast as well, but are not received as readily. 
Images are most effectively transmitted when both the sender and receiver have their eyes closed. The sender concentrates on a single object without environment or background, and the receiver's mind is clear of conscious thoughts. Communication between subjects using visual images, particularly those not rooted in memory but in imagination, is usually difficult. The sender typically has trouble conceiving a highly detailed mental object from a single point of view, while the receiver will often try to fill in gaps of missing information, ultimately resulting in the receiver seeing a different image from what was sent. The most difficult imagery to be successfully broadcast appears to be a person's face, particularly if the image is one of a person in motion. Although able to transmit his thoughts to others, SCP-041 is not very talkative. Attempts to persuade SCP-041 to divulge any information about his abilities have been so far fruitless. SCP-041 is typically silent and normally will not respond to any direct attempts at communication. However, SCP-041 appears to have a sense of humor as he interjects occasional comments into conversations of others. Addendum 01 While researcher was taking voice notes using a digital audio recorder, a fellow researcher was changing the television in SCP-041's room. While the television was on a channel of static, disembodied voices could be heard filtered through the white noise. Attempts to record mind-audible speech with white noise generators and sound recording equipment have begun to yield modest results, though most audio is garbled, and recorded sounds may or may not be voices and are widely left toward individual interpretations. Addendum 2 it has come to my attention that several personnel have used SCP-041 as an ad hoc, she likes me, she likes me not detector. This is one of the most appalling things I've ever heard. Are we safeguarding potentially world-destroying objects, or are we in third grade? Dr. Klein. Document 1, researchers quote, You know, the first time I was in that room with Kent in 41, I kept hearing this singing. It was this little girl's voice singing some kid's song. It wasn't the TV, and it definitely wasn't a radio. It was in our heads, you know? So I think, you know, if I was stuck in bed, without anything else to do, I'd sing like a little girl too. And then this voice comes into my head. Hey, it's not me. I don't know that tune. And then old Kent looks at me, gone all white in the face, you know? Note. This event occurred after SCP-239 was placed in a chemically induced coma. Any connection between the two SCPs is currently unconfirmed. Item Number SCP-055 Object Class Keter Special Containment Procedures Object is kept within a 5 meter by 5 meter by 2.5 meter square room, constructed of cement, 50 centimeter thickness with a Faraday cage surrounding the cement walls. Access is via a heavy containment door, measuring 2 by 2.5 meters, constructed on bearings to ensure door closes and locks automatically, unless held open deliberately. Security guards are not to be posted outside SCP-055's room. It is further advised that all personnel maintaining or studying other SCP objects in the vicinity try to maintain a distance of at least 50 meters from the geometric center of the room as long as this is reasonably practical. Description SCP-055 is a self-keeping secret, or anti-meme. Information about SCP-055's physical appearance, as well as its nature, behavior, and origins, is self-classifying. To clarify, how Site-19 originally acquired SCP-055 is unknown. When SCP-055 was obtained, and by whom is unknown. SCP-055's physical appearance is unknown. It is not indescribable or invisible. Individuals are perfectly capable of entering SCP-055's container and observing it, taking mental or written notes, making sketches, taking photographs, and even making audio-video recordings. An extensive log of such observations is on file. However, Information about SCP-055's physical appearance leaks out of a human mind soon after such an observation. Individuals tasked with describing SCP-055 afterwards find their minds wandering and lose interest in the task. Individuals tasked with sketching a copy of a photograph of SCP-055 are unable to remember what the photograph looks like, as are researchers overseeing these tests. 
Security personnel who have observed SCP-055 via closed-circuit television cameras emerge after a full shift exhausted and effectively amnesiac about the events of the previous hours. Who authorized the construction of SCP-055's containment room? Why it was constructed in this way? Or what the purpose of the described containment procedures may be are all unknown. Despite SCP-055's container being easily accessible, all personnel at Site-19 claim no knowledge of SCP-055's existence when challenged. All of these facts are periodically rediscovered, usually by chance readers of this file, causing a great deal of alarm. This state of concern lasts minutes at most, before the matter is simply forgotten about. A great deal of scientific data has been recorded from SCP-055, but cannot be studied. At least one attempt has been made to destroy SCP-055, or possibly move it from containment at Site-19 to another site, meeting failure for reasons unknown. SCP-055 may present a major physical threat, and indeed may have killed many hundreds of personnel, and we would not know it. Certainly it presents a gigantic mimetic mental threat, hence its Keter classification. Document 055-1 an analysis of SCP-055. The author puts forward the hypothesis that SCP-055 was never formally acquired by and is in fact an autonomous or remotely controlled agent inserted at Site-19 by an unidentified third party for one or all of the following purposes. To silently observe or interfere with activities at Site-19. To silently observe or interfere with activities at other SCP locations to silently observe or interfere with activities of humanity, worldwide. To silently observe or interfere with other SCP objects. To silently observe or interfere with No action to counter any of these potential threats is suggested, or indeed theoretically possible. Addendum A Hey, if this thing really is an anti-meme, why doesn't the fact that it's an anti-meme get wiped? We must be wrong about that somehow. Wait a minute. What if we were to keep notes about what it isn't? Would we remember those? Bartholomew Hughes, NSA Document 055-2 Report of Dr. John Marichek Survey Team Number 19-055-127-BXE was successfully able to enter SCP-055's container and ascertain the appearance and, to some degree, the nature of the object. Notes were taken according to the project methodology after which the container was sealed again. Excerpt from a transcript of personnel debriefing follows. Dr. Hughes Okay, I'm going to need to ask you some questions about number 55 now. Interviewee Number what? Dr. Hughes SCP Object 55, the object you just examined. Interviewee Um, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't think we have a 55. Dr. Hughes Okay then. I'd like you to tell me what you've been doing for the past two hours. Interviewee What? I... Subject appears uncomfortable. I don't know. Dr. Hughes Okay then. Do you remember that we all agreed that it wasn't spherical? Interviewee That what wasn't? Oh, right. It isn't round at all. Object 55 isn't round. Dr. Hughes So you remember it now? Interviewee Well, no. I mean, I don't know what it is, but I know there is one. It's something you can't remember, and it's not a sphere. Dr. Hughes Wait a minute. What's not a sphere? Interviewee Object 55 Dr. Hughes Object what? Interviewee Doc, do you remember agreeing that something wasn't shaped like a sphere? Dr. Hughes Oh, right. It appears to be possible to remember what SCP-055 is not, negations of fact, and to repeatedly deduce its existence from these memories. Personnel involved in Survey 19-055-127-BXE reported moderate levels of disorientation and psychological trauma associated with cycles of repeated memory and forgetfulness of SCP-055. However, no long-term behavioral or health problems were observed and psych assessments of survey personnel showed consistent reports of this distress fading over time. Recommendations It may be worthwhile to post at least one staff member capable of remembering the existence of SCP-055 to each critical site. Item Number 
SCP-061. Object Class. Safe. Special Containment Procedures. The source code for SCP-061 is to be kept on a standard archival quality read-only data compact disk, or CD-ROM. Four copies of the CD-ROM with the source code are to be stored in separate maximum security and animate object lockers. Except for purposes of approved experimentation, SCP-061 is not to be loaded, compiled, or run. Research proposals for SCP-061 require written approval from Site Command. Only one copy of the CD-ROM containing the source code for SCP-061 may be used at a time. The CD-ROM is to be returned to storage immediately after having been used to load the source code for SCP-061 to a device. SCP-061 must never be loaded, compiled, or run on any device which has a connection to the internet, either directly or via another device. SCP-061 must never be loaded, compiled, or run on any device which is physically capable of wireless connectivity, regardless of whether that connectivity is in use. For purposes of approved experimentation, SCP-061 may be loaded, compiled, and run on a LAN consisting of no more than three devices plus peripherals. No devices are to be disconnected from the LAN during experimentation. Following the conclusion of experimentation, all devices within this LAN are to be immediately reformatted. Audio output peripherals for this LAN are to be contained within an observation chamber, surrounded with noise-canceling vacuum insulation. In the event of a perimeter breach by hostiles during SCP-061 experimentation, all devices within the LAN are to be immediately destroyed. Description: SCP-061 is an acoustic computer program being developed by SCP researchers with the intent of producing successful countermeasures to similar programs being developed by governments and individuals around the world. Inspired by research on data expunged, SCP Command saw both the potential and harm in the ability to control the brain functions of other human beings. Laymen understand that music can elicit certain emotions and memories, or various sounds can elicit fear and excitement by simply being heard. Governments around the world have been attempting to expand on that premise for decades. SCP research is the first to elicit responses on higher mental activities. Parts of the brain affected by SCP-061 differ from those stimulated by data expunged or by subliminal messaging. Instead of acting on parts of the brain that are thought to be in control of the subconscious, acoustic frequencies produced by SCP-061 intercept conscious thoughts as they are produced and replace them. Instead of a suggestion, the human hearing center bisects the conscious thinking mind of the frontal lobe with the motor control cortical homunculus of the brain. A baseline rhythm convinces the rest of the brain that the conscious mind is asleep and effectively stops conscious thought from continuing to the rest of the brain. In return, the frontal lobe experiences a pause that resembles the psychological effects of anesthesia. Acoustic codes developed by SCP-061 are interpreted by motor centers in the brain as conscious instructions, and the subject typically acts accordingly. Subjects will normally have a blank facial expression while under the influence of SCP-061. They are not responsive to attempts at conversation and express no desires, such as hunger or interest in sexual advances. Though all commands are followed without question, the effects of the auditory control cease once the subject is no longer able to hear the program. Most test subjects report being unable to remember the actions they performed while under control, but a few had experienced the effect of watching helplessly as their body acted against their will. The intent of such research is to discover ways to counteract the effects of auditory mind control. However, only two methods of countermeasures have proven successful as of yet. One. The subject's hearing is impaired so that the individual can no longer hear the program, either by covering the ear or deafening the subject. 2. The program itself sends a coded instruction to the hearing center of the brain, permanently shutting it down. Though the ear continues to hear, there has been no progress in finding the proper code to reboot the hearing center of the brain. Addendum 01 All subjects are placed under auditory control, issued a coded auditory command, and then monitored. Subject 4402F. Command. Sleep. Response. Subject curled up into a fetal position on the floor, and her brain began emitting alpha waves associated with sleep. Her eyes remained wide open in the typical blank, empty expression associated with controlled subjects, 
but her eyes twitched rapidly in ways associated with REM sleep. Subject, 4427M. Command, run on treadmill. Response, subject mounted treadmill and then proceeded to run. Subject did not turn on the treadmill, resulting in the subject impacting the control platform. Subject repeated this until the stop command was issued. Note, more detailed commands are advised for task-oriented commands. Subject 4427M. Command. Turn treadmill on. Run on treadmill. Response. Subject turned on the treadmill to maximum speed, mounted, and attempted to run before being ejected off the conveyor belt. Subject repeatedly attempted to turn on the treadmill to a random speed and run on it, with various outcomes. Note. More detailed commands are advised for task-oriented commands. Subject. 4427M. Command. Turn on treadmill to jogging speed. Jog on treadmill. Response. Subject successfully jogged on treadmill until stop command was issued, which resulted in subject being ejected off the conveyor belt. Note. Subject should be in a safe neutral position before stop commands are issued. Item number. SCP-091. Object class. Safe. Special Containment Procedures SCP-091 is to be stored in a standard containment locker at site- When SCP-091 is not being tested, it is to be placed under combination lock. Since SCP-091 has shown no signs of resistance to tearing or damage greater than that of normal cardboard, great care should be taken when transporting it to and from testing sites. During testing, no one other than the subject should view SCP-091. Those suspected of having seen SCP-091 are to be administered Class B amnestics immediately, and all personal recordings or images in the possession of the subject, both print and digital, are to be destroyed to prevent recurrence. Description: SCP-091 is a Scotty's brand tissue box, currently empty. Immediately upon observing SCP-091, Viewers report an overwhelming sense of nostalgia. Those affected begin reminiscing about times they were near SCP-091, major events that occurred while it was present, or people and places that somehow relate to it. SCP-091 was originally recorded as an anomalous item and sent to Reliquary Site-44 until one of the members of the recovery team, assistant researcher while viewing a recording of her wedding from 1990 noted SCP-091 in the background of the film, and noted a strong flood of nostalgic memories attached to it, including memories of SCP-091 at the wedding itself, memories of SCP-091 at the reception, memories of SCP-091 during the honeymoon. A further interview with assistant researcher Wang's ex-husband demonstrated that he too remembered SCP-091 in all those places and situations again noting strong feelings of nostalgia and fondness for it. Further investigation found that several people who attended the wedding remember SCP-091 being there and the emotional effect. Others were asked to describe the wedding itself without being informed of SCP-091. In these cases, they described the scene without including SCP-091 until they were questioned about it directly. At that time, they immediately underwent the same previously observed effect. Continued testing under other situations has continued to produce similar results. Administration of amnestics has proven ineffective at stopping the effect if the subject is allowed to view an image or recording of SCP-091. Of note is the fact that in each recorded instance of SCP-091, the box pictured is full of tissues. Item Number SCP-099 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-099 is kept in a 1 meter by 75 centimeter wall-mounted fireproof case in Gallery 27. Standard climate and humidity controls apply to this section of the gallery. Due to its properties, SCP-099 can only be viewed within the gallery by level 2 staff or higher, and only from a distance greater than 5 meters, and for a period not to exceed 5 minutes per day. When not being viewed, the case is to remain shut and electronically sealed. Description: SCP-099 is a 73 by 50 centimeter painting titled The Portrait. Created in 1935 by surrealist painter René Magritte, the original painting possesses mimetic properties, 
that trigger acute paranoia and lingering psychological effects when viewed for too long or from a distance of approximately three meters or less. The painting depicts a simple still life, with the addition of a single eye staring back at the viewer. A reproduction of the work currently hangs in the Museum of Modern Art in New York, with critical elements removed to prevent the paranoia trigger. Detailed reproductions and photographs of the original work retain its mimetic properties. Those who have viewed the painting for too long, or from too close of a distance, become subject to the delusion that any being or depiction of a being with eyes is staring at them. In extreme cases, subjects report that inanimate objects are making eye contact. The condition is so severe that subjects will even report making eye contact with individuals whose heads are completely turned away. Depending on the length of the original exposure to the painting, subjects may suffer from this condition until death, resulting in severe paranoia and anoclophobia. Addendum SCP-099 was recovered from the private collection of K. Sage, another surrealist painter. Recovery was performed by MTF Theta-6, Pink Panther. Mrs. Sage was unaware of the recovery and replacement of SCP-099, although pre-recovery investigation suggests she was aware of its properties and was either immune or careful not to look too closely. Magritte was still alive at the time SCP-099 was stored in Gallery 27. He remained under Foundation surveillance until his death in 1967. Research suggests that the painting's mimetic trigger was intentionally created, although the effect and power of the trigger was likely unintentional. The Foundation has studied the rest of Magritte's work and found no anomalous mimetic properties to this date. Weaponized Replication Data Expunged Item Number SCP-114 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-114 is kept in a 10-meter cubed standard concrete humanoid containment cell at Site-17. The cell is positioned at the bottom of a 40-meter shaft to prevent staff members from coming into the proximity of SCP-114. The cell is accessible by a staircase restricted to emergency use only. Daily rations are provided to SCP-114 three times a day by means of a dumbwaiter. SCP-114 is also permitted to submit written requests to attending staff by the same means. To date, SCP-114 has been granted one Quran, Arabic, one prayer rug, and one blank journal with pens. Research on SCP-114 is suspended until further notice. Elimination of SCP-114 is acceptable in the event of a multiple containment breach crisis. Description SCP-114 is a Pashtun woman of Afghani origin, approximately 40 years old and 160 centimeters tall. SCP-114 has the involuntary effect of fostering and escalating violent conflict between all individuals in her proximity. Subjects within 10 to 15 meters of SCP-114 become inconsolably aggressive at trivialities or points of little consequence, often to the degree of projecting hostile motives on others. Arguments generally arise between individuals after one to three minutes of exposure to SCP-114. The resulting arguments turn to violence in all cases. Notably, persons affected by the presence of SCP-114 will never exhibit hostility towards SCP-114 or attempt to inflict harm upon her. Subjects ordered to deliberately injure SCP-114 find themselves unable to do so. Communication with SCP-114 has only been possible through written notes or electronic means. Researchers have gleaned that SCP-114 is unaware of her effect on other people. She shows little to no response to exposure to violence, and seems to be under the impression that human beings are naturally aggressively hostile to each other. SCP-114 is consistently unresponsive and uncooperative with researchers, and appears to be acutely wary of human interaction. Due to the difficulty of communication with SCP-114, psychological evaluations have been speculative at best. Rudimentary assessments strongly suggest psychological trauma. Combat stress reaction and or compassion fatigue have been tentatively proposed. Experiment Log 114-A SCP-114 was placed in a test room with distancing protocols similar to her containment cell. Attending researchers observed through remote electronic means. Experiment 114A-1 Procedure 
Subjects D-1269 and D-8543 were placed in the test room with SCP-114. No instructions were given. Results Subjects did not attempt to interact with SCP-114. After 75 seconds of exposure, D-8543 verbally requested a cigarette from D-1269. D-1269 responded with negative. D-8543 proceeded to shove D-1269 against the wall of the test room. Subjects began fighting with apparent intent to kill. Subjects ignored verbal entreaties to cease. Subjects terminated. Throughout the experiment, SCP-114 watched the proceedings, but was visibly unmoved. Experiment 114A-2 Procedure Subjects D-5410 and D-5699 were placed in the test room with SCP-114. A plastic screen was placed across the length of the test room so that subjects were unaware of the presence of SCP-114. Results Comparable to Experiment 114A-1 Subjects terminated. Experiment 114A-3 Procedure Subject D-1002 was given a carving knife, stainless steel, 15 centimeters. Subject was placed in the test room of SCP-114 with orders to kill her. Results D-1002 immediately rushed at SCP-114. SCP-114 recoiled, screaming. D-1002 stopped abruptly at approximately half a meter from SCP-114 and dropped the knife. D-1002 stood still for four minutes, growing visibly agitated. At five minutes, D-1002 began yelling incomprehensibly and moving around the room in an unnatural ape-like fashion. After eight minutes, D-1002 began banging on the walls with his head and fists. Subject was rendered unconscious. Subject terminated. Experiment 114A-4 Procedure Subject D-4343 was placed in the test room with SCP-114, with orders to remain still. After four minutes, subject was forcibly removed from the room by robotic means. Results Subject showed signs of aggression and agitation comparable to Experiment 114A-3. Heart rate was recorded at 210 BPM. Blood tests revealed levels of cortisol and adrenaline impossible without the application of drugs. Subject returned to a normal physical and mental state after approximately 15 hours. Experiment 114A-5 Procedure Subject D-7258, a native Afghan, was administered a dilute mixture of mild sedatives, antidepressants, tetrahydrocannabinol, alpha blockers, and beta blockers intravenously. Subject was placed in the test room with SCP-114 and ordered to attempt normal conversation. Results D-7258 addressed SCP-114. SCP-114 maintained eye contact with D-7258, but did not respond. After 45 seconds, D-7258 began shivering and shouting. At one and a half minutes after exposure, D-7258 fell to the floor in convulsions. Subject expired after three minutes. Autopsy of the cadaver revealed a massive cerebral hemorrhage. Document 114-A-898-12 Abridged eyewitness report by a former soldier in the 40th Red Army, interviewed March 23, 1991. Translated and transcribed. We took on February the 1st, 1980. It was a shit little village, but the Mujahideen put up a damn good fight. Eight of our men killed, 15 wounded, one tank destroyed. It was dead cold, too. You think the Middle East is warm, but you go to the mountains in February. It is not so. Anyway, we were mopping up the area, going through the huts, looking for weapon caches and the like. It seemed like every doorstep had some old babushka weeping and tearing at her hair and clutching our knees. But at the end of the street was this one big hut, no babushka outside. Only there were trays of food left out, like an offering before the door pauses for several seconds. So six of us go in to search. It was big and empty inside, dusty and practically bare. Didn't look like anyone had been there in a long time. But soon, we hear this soft whimpering though. And look, over in the corner there's a little girl, must be eight or nine, curled up and all alone. Piotr, he was a big softy. He goes over, he bends down, puts out his hands. 
says, Come on, little one. It is okay. We won't hurt you. But the girl won't budge. Then Pyotr stands up, all stiffly, and looks back at us funny. Konstantin walks over and puts a hand on his shoulder, tells him to leave the girl alone, laughing good-naturedly. Pyotr gets all red-faced, like he's had a full bottle, and shouts, Get your damn hand off my shoulder! Or something of the sort. He looks like a wild animal. We are all in surprise. And suddenly, they're on the ground, and he's bashing Konstantin's face in with the butt of his rifle, screaming. It took three of us to pull him off, and by then, Konstantin was dead. Lesson complete. To continue with your orientation training, subscribe to SCP Orientation right now, and make sure you don't miss any of our upcoming videos.